Hey, welcome back to the tutorial. In this lecture, let's capture the I2C transactions on the logic analyzer. Here is the connection. Here I have a master board where I have downloaded code of the I2C master. And here is a slave board where I have downloaded code for I2C slave. So you have to plug the hardware one by one and then download the code. Don't try to plug both the boards to your computer and try to download the code because Kiel will issue an error. So while downloading only one board has to be connected to your PC. Great. Now I have connected the channel zero of the logic analyzer to PB6 pin, which is I2C clock uh, that we call SCL. And I have connected channel one of the logic analyzer to PB9, which is I2C data line, that is SDA. Now the code is running on both the boards and you can see that the blue LED is blinking on both the boards. That's our indication for correct data communication between the boards. If there is any error, then red LED will be gone. Great, now let's capture the I2C transactions on the analyzer. I'll keep the sampling rate of say 24 million sample per second and duration uh, as five seconds. Now let's capture. Now the first trace is I2C clock line and the second trace is I2C data line. Now first let's decode this trace. Again, click on the analyzer here, select I2C. Our SDA is channel one of the logic analyzer and SCL is channel zero. Then click, then click on save. Once you save it, you can see here the software has already decoded the samples. Let's analyze this decoded information. First, let's take one piece of trace. Let's take this one and just zoom it. Here you can see a green dot indicates the start condition and a red dot indicates the stop condition. Let's zoom it further. Here you can see the SDA went low when the clock is high, hence it's the start condition, isn't it? Then this is the address phase. Here A6 is a slave address along with write bit. For that, slave has act here. Zero cross C1 is our write command sent by the master. And for that also slave has act successfully. Then master generates the stop condition. So in these two transactions, master has successfully sent the write command. Now in these two transactions, master has successfully sent the write length. Zero cross zero phi is the write length which is sent by the master to slave. Then master sends out the write stream to the slave of length phi o bytes. So this is the trace for write stream. Here you can cross check from the code. This is the array which master sends out to the slave during write command. This array and this trace matches exactly. So this is the write command followed by the write length and then data stream. This is the I2C write phase for sending out write command that is C1. This is the I2C write phase for sending out the write length and this is the I2C write phase for sending out data stream. Now, this is the trace for master read. Here C2 is the read command which we sent to read from the slave. And then master sends out the read length to the slave that is this trace. Now the master is all set to receive the data stream from the slave. So that's why master triggers read phase. 
Here you can see it changes now to R, which indicates read phase. And the address is changed to A7. That means read write bit is now set to 1. After that, this is the data stream sent out from slave to the master. So here, this is the trace for master sending out read command, which is C2. Then this is the trace for master sending out read length, which is 5 bytes. And this is the trace for slave sending out data stream to the master. Observe that this is the I2C master write phase for sending out command. This is the I2C master write phase for sending out the read length. And this is the I2C master read phase for receiving data from the slave. Then finally, master generates the stop condition. And again, the loop continues. Great, that's how with the help of logic analyzer, you can analyze any protocol uh, data. If there is any problem in the I2C communication, like wrong data, uh, wrong slave, uh, wrong slave address, NAC, etc., you will be able to immediately debug uh, by looking into the trace. Uh, then you can go back to your code and try to fix it. So whenever your code doesn't work as expected, then don't just keep staring at the code, but get the trace on the logic analyzer. So and decode what's happening on the bus.